There's a cat over here. There's a cat over there. And the wrong one died. And the wrong one died. Welcome to The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the catastrophe. I'm your host, Mike Abrams, and today we have another amazing guest. You know her and might know her from her time on Broadway as Elphaba in Wicked, but she was the most recent Grizabella on the U.S. National Tour of Cats. So welcome, Donna Vivino. Thank you for joining me. Hi. I am excited because I love any time I get to talk to a Grizabella since I spent my entire podcast explaining why I don't think she should be the, the cat to go to the heaviside layer. But before we get to that argument at the very end, <laughs> I do want to hear, I love hearing about someone like you who has, has this long Broadway career, your experience with Cats. Like it's such a, a show that's been around forever. What was your first introduction to the show before, you know, you end up as the main character on tour? Um, I had never seen the show until I got the part. Never? So, No. I saw the show for the first time the first week of January of 2020, and then I was in the show the following week. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, I did the show for not almost – I did the show for two months. Uh, I I didn't know – I had auditioned for the tour a year, like back in – before it went out in 2019, and so I learned the song Memory. But I had never seen the show uh, until I actually had the part. (laughs) What is your, like, what was your, as someone who's, you know, knowledgeable on theater, been in the world for a while, what was your impression of the show? Because, like, as an outsider, I, it's something I knew about as, like, it's just a show that exists. You know, I had heard so much about it, and mostly, it kind of had become this joke, I guess, that it was like, oh, yeah, cats, because it just had been around for so long, and I think even Phantom sometimes, you know, it's just one of those things, when a show runs for a really long time, people go, oh, yeah, cats, even Wicked, oh, yeah, Wicked, right? Um, But I did have a couple people who would say to me, I love cats, I think it's great, I know it's, like, old, and it's been around forever, but I like it, but most people would be like, oh, cats, I guess cats became sort of, like, the butt of jokes in, like, even, like, if you watch, like, I don't know, I feel like, you could watch like a show like 30 Rock or even Beep I watched recently and they make a joke about cats. It's always like the go-to musical theater show if you're going to like make a joke about cheesy musicals, you pick cats. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that it's yeah. not cheesy. It's weird F, okay? It is a weird show. Mm-hmm. So when I saw it, I was like, this is weird. This is like da- concert dance light and opera light sometimes and rock concert light like it's all just sort of a strange little beast but it's a phenomenon i mean it is yeah it, so. it really is the butt end of odd drugs i i was tracking it for a little while like i saw a modern family episode where one of the characters was tugger and then family guy <laughs> did one where they drove a car into the stage oh yeah and oh yeah it's always the butt of every joke it's it's easy um and it's, it's a easy. polarizing joke uh, like you know, a show sure. because it's got people that hate it, yes. and people that love it, and yes. then people who are indifferent but don't know a lot about it, but just know about it. That it's, was it's me. That I was indifferent, didn't know anything about it. Really loved this. I thought the song "Memory" was beautiful, but again, that song also was like, "Oh yeah, memory." But then when I actually had to learn it, I was like, "This song's really beautiful." Um, and so, uh, so I really just knew the song. I had had I had to sing it for with a symphony once. I had to sing it for a concert. Uh, um, it was a request, uh, also for a private, uh, gig that I did at a private concert at someone's house. So I had, I'd performed the song live three times and then, um, and then the audition happened and, uh, I did not, uh, do the tour when it opened. And then they called December 26, 2019 and said, do you want to go out and play Grizabella? And I was like, um, okay. Like for the last six months of the tour wound up being the last two months of the tour because yeah. of COVID. But, uh, and I was like, okay, I guess I have to see it. What I was blown away by was the dancing. I thought, wow, these kids are incredible. And this is so hard, like all the dancing they're doing. And I, I thought it was pretty amazing. I mean, I do think that to be an ensemble member in Cats, um, you have to be so freaking talented. I mean, that I that I do want to say. Like, I think it's sort of like a rite of passage for young musical theater dancers who usually are triple threats because they have to sing too. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and as I've talked to um, – cast members it's it's really clear that it's like they either were passionate about this is something they grew up watching and they knew about and it's like kind of the end all be all or they kind of hated it but then got the opportunity is like well this is such a you know huge opportunity and it's such a beautiful dance numbers and stuff like that that they kind of have ended that way 
walk me through your first time watching it. I have to it. say, oh, go ahead. Well, being in the show, I think, is more fun than than watching. Than watching. It. <laughs> That's just my. <laughs> I think being in the show is about. However, I said that to someone. I won't say who it is, but he's a very, very well respected theater maker in New York City. And I said that to him like just last week. And he said, Oh, I love cats. It's sort of my secret thing. I loved I love watching it because it reminds him of when he fell in love with theater. So there's something super nostalgic about it. So now I'm like, you know what? Maybe it is fun to watch. I think for for me, I found I found I enjoyed myself. It doesn't didn't change my life, but does theater always have to change your life? No. No, I, I mean, and as a someone who just enjoys going to theater and not doesn't know much about any of the stuff that's related to it, it very rarely changes my life. It's more of just like, that was really entertaining. I'm glad I went. Exactly. And then I go on and move about my day. That's great. And there's a big place for that. I say as I'm wearing my Hades Town hat and I watched yeah. it three times, I'm like, it changed my life. But truthfully, no, it doesn't. It's it's about it, it, it is a it is a really entertaining um, show, and people go nuts for it. Yeah, they go nuts. It is. Well, it has the fan base is is a is an extreme fan base. Uh huh. The walk me through your first time seeing it because what you're watching seeing it now it? as a week before you're going to go on. Did you do you watch that as like a audience member, or were you watching it more for I need to be ready to perform this? First time I watched it, I decided, all right, I'm just going to watch this as an audience member. Um, I had already been rehearsing in New York for a couple of days. So, uh, but I like to just let it wash over me. It, it's hard when like Grisabella comes on stage for me not to be like, okay, wait, what exactly is she doing? But I knew I'd have the next week or so to just be watching every night if I want to going backstage and watching from the wings. So I knew it. So I just sort of wanted to watch it and let it wash over me. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I was, then I was really excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And and then I was also slightly terrified because I'm like, oh, I really have I really have to sing the, the song. Yeah. The, the song, song that, that a lot of people, that's all they want to hear. And I got one shot because if you're, if you're Alphaba and you, you know, kind of blow it in your first number, you have like 20,000 more big numbers to do where yeah. you can kind of redeem yourself. Whereas, you know, you got memory, babe. And it's like, get out there and do it. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, Showstopper um, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to, so, um, but, but I, but I was really excited to be dressed up, (laughs) do the make. I was so excited to do the makeup and do my own makeup. And that's what excited me the most is like, oh my God, I got the coolest costume. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it is, like you said, the number of people go to see, um, or a lot of people go to see, although now that I've really broken down the show, I think there's a lot more that, that people actually end up either they enjoying do. or not knowing, but they do. But I feel like vocally, that's the song where they're expecting like great vocals, a great solo vocal, and it's uh, it, it 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 can be a little. I didn't allow myself to feel a pressure, but it could be pressure if you're not careful. You could be like, oh my god, oh my god, it's the one song, but it's like no, there's a lot of other things. Like it's not all about Grisabella, even though she mm-hmm. thinks it is. Yeah. Um, that is very true. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the plot. Um, so, so the first time you saw it, sober, I'm assuming sober. Oh gosh, yes. I was. It was me and four other people that were going into the show with me that week. Okay. We had all been rehearsing, it. and they, they were my four kittens because they're all they were all probably about you know ten to fifteen years younger than me. <laughs> uh, you know, all coming you know right out of college, coming into the show, and um and I was so I, I remember I took a picture. I said, "Mama and her kittens." And yes, yeah. of course, we were all sober. We had we had uh rehearsed been rehearsing that day, and then we're going to see it that night. So yeah, I was sober the first time. Um, Soberish the second time. I've only seen like. it sober. Should I watch the film not sober or something? So which, I haven't seen it yet. Which I was going to ask: Have you seen the 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 most recent film or the nineteen ninety eight? I never saw the ninety eight, but I I did see a clip of Elaine Page doing "Remark the Cat," and I love her. I love her. So I was just like, oh, cool. And I saw that. Was it? I saw that actually randomly. A couple of years before I auditioned for Cats, I had just seen it like a clip in something. And I was like, ooh, okay. Elaine Page, cool, fierce. I forgot she was Grisabella. That was it. Yeah. Um, however, uh, I I have not seen the movie yet. I'm sort of waiting to figure out the best way to do that. So I was that was going to be one of my questions because you see, you started like right after it came out. It came I know, out and December. it was really great for our ticket sales, but 
Oh, wow. Yeah. It actually helped the ticket sales immensely. Oh, I'm sure. Because it was a, uh, my, the, the movie was a, a decision. It was kind of the best way to describe it. <laughs> uh, the movie was not a box office success. However, people who love cats, it made them want to go see our show because they're like, yeah, no, I need to go see cats again. This is not what cats is. It's so that made them palate want- cleanser. From the movie, I, probably. I, 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 I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna watch the movie this weekend. Now you've got me. Uh... I think you should watch it. I'd be very curious to see. As like, there's, there's a lot of choices that if you're familiar with the show, like the right. the, the stage version, you're some. You're like, eh, I'm not sure I feel about that. And others, so I think like the purists are gonna have very strong opinions on it, but are just also happy to see it go almost a little bit mainstream. Yes. yes. I think it's for anyone who doesn't have any idea about the show. It's yes. a fairly – like they added an extra song. They tried to make a storyline out yes. of it. It's a little confusing to begin with because the right. show is confusing to begin with. Yeah, it is. The movie didn't help. But it's it's interesting now because now that we're multiple months removed from it, I mean uh, over a year removed from it, the main people have distanced themselves from the movie. And so it's oh it's kind of a uh, – <laughs> I, I think it has a Rocky Horror Picture Second Life coming though. A nine, nine lives probably. Yes, nine <laughs> lives. So I, I kind of love the beauty of like, never saw it until you're about to go perform it. Mm-hmm. No, like surface level um, and still haven't seen a lot of the other things. So what were you told? Like, cause you had to have been given some backstory then of how yeah. to play Grizabella. First, first day of rehearsal, I had to sit in a room um, with, with someone um, who sat down with, with a notebook and opened it up and talk to me for 45 minutes about the history of the show Cats. Why well, actually was really helpful to get all of that. Yeah. It was sort of like the speech, um, the history of Cats, how it all came to be, um, and then what every single scene, what is actually happening, where Grizabella fits in, all of these things. Uh, so I got 45 minutes on it, which I think is super important because I would have been – and when I said I've never seen it, they were like, great. They actually loved that, I think, that I didn't have any preconceived notions because – I could kind of come at it and they could be like, great, a blank slate. We'll just tell her yeah. what, you know. Yeah. It's gotta, it's gotta be helpful. I, um, I would love to see that notebook because I've been uh-huh. trying to figure it out myself uh-huh. as a, someone who enjoys the story writing piece of it. Like I, my sure. whole analysis has been on the plot, not anything else because I Great, just, great. Well, you know, the thing is, is that they, they, they tell you things, but then they also, there's also some mystery also that they, they leave. Uh, and, and we all have our own theories about, you know, who, um, even like, you know, who I think I'm Victoria's mother possibly, you know, I, I do too. I so, mean, let's get into I mean, it. Come on. Let's, let's go into who, like, what do they tell you? What are your theories? I, I can tell you some of mine. Um, I have a couple I mean, that I know I've Deuteronomy is like, he's shady. I mean, I think he's fathering all those kittens. Yeah. Like something's up with him. I, I know he he's so great. He's, he's, he's the leader of a cult. And he's going to murder one. Yeah, I'm a, sac- I'm a sacrifice. Yeah, First of all, it was a sacrifice. You are murdered at the end of the show. <laughs> but everybody's begging, oh, please murder me. Please kill me. Oh, yes, right? It's a very dark it's, premise. It's about a cult, I think. The Jellicle cult. <laughs> it's the vow on HBO. It's Keith Rhaenyra. It's, it's Old Deuteronomy. It is the Jellicle cult. Yeah. Okay, so you think Old Deuteronomy is the father for most everybody. Pretty much. Him and McCavity, I think they're brothers, and they just are the fathers for. Oh yeah, yeah. Maca- well, ma- yeah, maybe McCavity's trying to save everybody, and he's all misunderstood. Ooh, that's nah, not an angle. I was gonna say that's <laughs> not an angle. I, had anybody <laughs> I don't argue think for. so. I don't think so. No, McCavity's. You know. He's so hungry. you're. He's you, hungry. I like Victoria. I think Victoria is very likely your daughter. That seems possible. Although there's a something, lot of or or her. I'm sort of like obsessed with. I mean, all I do in Act One is watch her. I mean, I come out during the Jellicle Ball, and and, and I know that like I mirror her choreography at one point, and I'm like, why am I mirroring her? Do I want to be just like her again? No, I'm remembering when I was young, but I'm like, but what if I'm watching her because she's my kitten? I don't know. I think that's possible. I think it's also the she is you, like yeah. she's the I was. The, I used to, you were when I was you beautiful, used to sure. be Victoria, and sure. so now you're reminiscing of past lives. What do you think happens to Grizabella when you left the tribe? Like, do they give you any break of like, because you're coming nope. back to the tribe. They tell you nothing about what happened. Oh, 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 oh well, um, I think, you know, I think that she, well, she went off with McCavity, you know, and, and I think whatever, you know, and I think she became like 
You can say it. I, a I, sex I, worker yeah. for him? Yeah, a sex, sex worker? worker. Uh, yeah, it's because I can't say prostitute now. But I mean, she, I think she was selling herself for him. And um, and she's coming back because she's like, she needs she needs that community again, right? She needs um, to reach on the call. Yeah. And I know that like Demeter had some issues with McCavity. Like she's yeah, all whacked out. Of relationship with Yeah, McCavity. she's all whacked out with him and um and and uh uh who's the a, a bomb but does not like uh uh Grisabelle at all. Um but she I think Bomb she, is the older sister of Demeter and is protective of her and I think yeah, Bomb but, might be also Bomb, your daughter. No, I don't know. I mean, I was told once that like Bomb better watch out or she's going to go the way of Grisabella. Um, uh. She's very, very like kind of full of herself and thinks she's fabulous. And um, she was with McCavity also, but, you know, is able to come out of it and it's sort of um, and she might. I don't know. It was it's very confusing. But I just know that like Grisabella kind of like was seduced by McCavity, like went off with him. He basically used her and abused her. And now she's basically been this stray cat kind of like Demeter's off on her own. On the next version. There's a rumor that Bomb and Demeter are both your kittens and you abandon them. And Demeter mm. is following your path and Bomb got away from it and is resentful of you for that. It is possible they're my kittens because if you look at the baby Grizz, which I had to do in the first scene, it mm -hmm. kind of looks like them. Yeah. Like the coloring is very similar. Uh, what explain baby Grizz to me? Uh, baby Grizz, uh, it, like uh, it was not explained to me. They told me like, no, you're just another cat. You're not baby Grizz. But the truth is, is that there have been productions where they call it baby Grizz. Um, I think honestly, it's just for the tour. They're like, we need another dancer body out there in the opening yeah, number. That's Peter um, too. That's where Peter comes from because they just yes, need, that's bus yes. us. They need another dancer. However, it has she has been called baby Grizz, and she does kind of resemble. I mean, she's just they're like, you're just a cat. You're just a cat. You're not baby Grizz. You're just a cat. <laughs> okay. And of that, course I That am, ruins but... my rumor then, which is that this is all a, it is all a cycle and each night Grizz Bella dies and she gets reincarnated to baby Grizz and baby Oh, Grizz it's like Groundhog Grizz. Day meets cats? Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's one In of fact, my theories. If I made ever, if, yeah, no, it's fun. If I ever do the show again, I think I'll do that because it kind of feels that way when you do a show over and over. So I yeah. could really, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the baby Grizz is just something that doesn't, is not explained. And the fact that it's, no. it's like, it's out there is another yeah. weird, weird piece. It's a strange I, little thing. Yep. What about the Jelly Lorem Bustopher Jones relationships? I don't, I don't know. I, 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 see Jelly, Jelly, I think has sort of become like this, like she became like this, the surrogate mother to all the kittens I abandoned. Mm -hmm. I, I, she, I think she really hates me because I abandoned these kittens. I mean, she's definitely super maternal and I think she can't fathom the fact that I like abandoned my kittens and went off of my cavity. So there is a little bit of a rumor that you two were best friends growing up. Maybe I made this up. I can't, at this point, I can't differentiate rumors I made up and what are actual truth anymore. Uh, but I, I really thought there was a love triangle between Buster for Jones, Jelly Lorm and you as Grisabella because Grizabella and Jelly Lorm were friends growing up. Buster Jones was also potentially one of the lovers of the two of them. It's possible. Uh, I mean, Grizabella wasn't very discerning, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems like Grizabella is tied. It seems like every older cat is tied to every older cat. And every kitten sure. is tied to every kitten. And every kitten is, is a son or daughter of every older cat except for one which i did find a rumor that one was adopted which makes no sense to me who's adopted oh i do not remember is it alonzo no it was i can find it because it was somebody in that talked about or was it cassandra shanks. it was one of skimble shanks's oh. children's so let's see if i can find it in my notes here corp cat yeah is that his skimble shanks adopted son oh but isn't corp cat one of the twins <laughs> I, I I didn't make up half these rumors. I found so a lot the of twins. these rumors. Those are the twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the twins are crazy, breeds. man. The twins are like alien cats, man. They have like spidey sense. Yeah, I've learned a lot more about them recently. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty, not they're ones pre I they're pretty creepy. But they, they have the sixth sense. Like they, they know everything before it happens, it sounds yes, like. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they're the ones who always spot Grisabella lurking. They're always like, bing! Yeah. And they like. They might deserve their own episode. You know, I, I can't stand Monk. He's can't stand Monk. Ugh, he's so righteous and he's so annoying. He's always the one like, mm, 
go away. He's you know? he's trying to be the next old dude. Yeah, well, he's a joke. <laughs> so who else do you love and hate? What? Like, tell me more about your. I love Victoria. I think she's sweet. And um, what about Mungo Jerry and Ripple Teaser. They're fun. I mean, they're harmless, really. Aren't they? I don't. I think Rizabella's just like whatever. They're like alley cats. Ugh. Whatever they're like, they're the ones that are stealing everything. Little thieves, yeah. yeah. But they're 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 just mischievous. They're not like you know. What about Tugger? Tugger, God, I'm not gonna say what just came. You should. You should say what came to your mind. God, he's so in the closet. That's what I think of Tugger. That that is ninety percent of the fan fiction is Tugger. Yes, of course, because he doesn't look at me the right way. I know, Grisabella knows. Back in the day, Tug never really. I think Tugger's, uh, you know, fabulous. <laughs> That's what I think of Tugger. <laughs> okay. Um, what about Mistopheles? Oh, Mistopheles. I don't know. Mistoph- I don't know. Mistopheles seems so asexual to me. Interesting. Yeah. Mistopheles is like magical and like kind of, but, but you know, you, you, Tugger might have a crush on Mistopheles, but maybe, you know, maybe they are an item. That See, I, Tugger does have a lot of sexual energy, but I don't get sexual energy off of Mistopheles at all. So if you want to... But they'd be cute. They'd be super cute. If you want to waste some time, go to the fan fiction websites, uh-huh. and it's almost all Tugger and Mistopheles fan fiction. Well, it kind of makes sense. I, I I want you to watch... I'm curious if your opinion will change if you watch and not the whole movie because that's two out two hours and twenty minutes of of time on the 1998 movie that I don't feel like you're going to need to to watch. But on YouTube are the clips of the the of the the numbers which do come from that movie. I want you to watch Mistopheles. Okay. And I I would be curious if you still think he's asexual because there's like yeah, that's the number for the kids in the audience though usually they they built in a lot of like. Like rainbows and lightnings and all kinds of stuff to okay. where it does feel very, like it's very clear that he's very much out of the closet. Oh, maybe he's coming out. That's a number coming out. Yeah, it could maybe. be. I don't know. I just know that like that's the cat that my son's always drawing pictures of because all the little children love. So that's you know. the kid's number. Yeah. And then but- the, the dad's number is McCavity. The mom's <laughs> number is Tugger. Right, right, right. And and then memories for memories the, the for grandparents. Mm, it's for grand. It's for I think it's also for people that like love theater diva stuff. I theater think it's di- not yeah. just grand. I think that's for there's a look now. It's also for the theater buffs. I think. So now that you've been in the show, you know a lot more. What would be your if you were going to talk to somebody who was like you, hadn't seen it, just knows a little bit of it, how would you explain the plot to somebody? A bunch of cats are in a junkyard competing for the opportunity to uh, be reborn. They want to be born again. <laughs> and it's just cat after cat. Yeah, they're all in a competition to uh, be chosen. To to, win. to 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 well to be reborn, and then there's just a giant orgy in the middle. Yep. <laughs> and. Yep. And it's a cult. Um, and the moon is full, so they probably do it about once a month. I think. Okay, so wait, they're going to kill people once a month. I don't think they kill her. I think she's dying. So okay, so I I guess it just depends. So a monthly ritual, the ball happens monthly. I don't and know. They don't say reborn. how often it happens, but the moon is full. So I feel like it happens when the moon well, is full. It happens eight times a week for like 45 years. Eight times a week? Yeah. Isn't that how many shows oh. you do? Well, I didn't do it for 45 years, but yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right. been on for 40 plus years. Um, yeah. So I don't monthly. know. Monthly. Ooh. You're going to run out of you're gonna run out of cats pretty quickly. Yeah. But they cats, breed, cats yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't think – maybe so maybe it's once a year. Maybe it's once a year. I had always moon, thought once a year. The moon has to be full, though. So. The moon's full. I, I maybe I just I don't know. Maybe I just assumed it was once a year. It just felt like a, a annual tradition uh, of a sacrifice for the betterment the, of the tribe. Right, but they all want to be sacrificed. Which is again why this show's so dark. It's a cult. 
But she's actually dying. She's like, please put me out of my misery. But so she, is Gus. Wouldn't you argue that for Gus? You want Gus to go. Well, I interpret this show completely different, which I'm happy to explain why. But the most common argument anti Grizabella is Gus. Sure, sure. He seems worthy, actually. Yeah. Because he seems almost more worthy. He's been in the cult longer. Yeah. He's been yeah. staying with the cult. He didn't leave the cult to go do yeah, his thing. Yeah, his loyalty should be um, rewarded. Yeah. I watched I it for a totally different view. I saw the revival and I saw it as a X Factor because I saw it with an <laughs> X Factor character <laughs> right. or a cast right. member. And I thought, let's just pick the best number. I'm not going to going to think anything else besides this of who's worthy or any plot line or any story. And then I thought in the X factor, they have a very long history of combining, you know, two soloists into a group like uh-huh. uh, fifth harmony. And uh, who was the boy band one that they did um, one direction. Both came from X factor mm-hmm, as individualists. Mm-hmm. So I want to grab Mustafa's together. That would be my vote. Those are the two okay. numbers that I was like show stoppers for me. And so I vote. I you voted want the for them two together. of them to go together. Well, Burton or you. Well, they. I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let you know that um, they don't let you vote. But wouldn't that be fun if you yeah. could vote from your seat and then whoever should, goes right? up there on the tire? Wouldn't that be great? Like yeah, new so. and improved. I should. I should write to them. And be like, this is what you're gonna do. There will be a, a, a <laughs> an old Deuteronomy after memory. And now, please, at your seats, please yeah. take out your devices. Take your phone. And then everybody votes. And then whoever gets it, they just go up on the tire and we watch That's it. That's who goes on the tire. I love it. And old Deuteronomy just has a big X. So he, if he didn't like, you know, he's like, I'm tired of Mungo Jerry and Ripple Teaser. He hits a big X and we just go to the next song. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe. that That's even, wow. This is why I don't work in theater. Right. Because I don't think that would work. No, I don't think so either. But Definitely I do, not. I do, I do really enjoy um, – I did enjoy the show. I was I was mesmerized. I had no idea what was you happening. You know what? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But if you're looking for a great plot, plot line, or, it's not there. It's a poem. It's a book of poems, you know? It's a book of poems. Music. And the, the last poem was not in the book because it was too dark for his for T.S. Eliot's Well, Grisab- Grisabella um, – uh, you know the story of how she came to be because she wasn't even in the show, and then it's a, and it's a separate poem. It was scrawled on a piece of paper that he never put yeah. in the book because the book was for children, and it was like Grizabella the Glamour Cat, and it was like, and he had all these notes on her, and they were like, oh, and they're and they're like, this is what we need. We got to put this character in. I the widow I the widow loved. Elliot the widow Elliot had like here she's like here you can have his notes here they go here they are and they're like what is this Grizabella the Glamour Cat. But I love that that's the arc of the story. It's like, because I've argued that I don't think kids should see the, see the show. And, and people have kind of talked me more into why it's okay, because it goes over their head. But as I've learned about the plot and then know that the story, the poem that we're going to, oh, that yeah. we're not going to be using is aggressively dark. And even T.S. Eliot was like, this is too much for my children's book. Right. It's the center of the, the story. I know. I know. What is it like belting out an iconic song? I mean, and you do in Wicked too, but like in in memory, every night. No, it, it, it's different in Cats because it's it's one song, and so it's quite yeah. special. And I miss it a lot. I really, really, really loved playing Grisabella. I didn't realize how much I was going to love it. I used to cry, um, when I would get when I would fly. Not because I was scared. I love flying, but like in in the revival, it's not just the tire that goes up. Like she also comes off of a harness mm-hmm. and flies in the air. And I would cry because it was just like this release. It was so much fun. I would just i I loved it. I loved doing that show. I wish I could do it again. Maybe maybe in a second life you come yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Later. I have nine of them. Yeah, I would love it. It was oh, it was a blast. I mean, it'll come back. There's no way. Yeah, but it it's coming back, back non-union. So yeah, for now. You don't For think now, be, but, I, there's, yeah, but then they'll be like, "Oh, you're too old." So who knows? Although she can, she can be pretty old. That's the thing about Grisabella. You can go any age; doesn't really matter. It's cat makeup, and if you can sing the song, you can sing the song. But it, it was, it was so much fun to do it. I just wanted a little more time. Yeah, yeah. What's I, I really want to because I find so much fun in trying to make these cats into other people. Mm-hmm. I want to figure out which wicked characters would be which cats. Okay. Do you, have any, um, do you have thoughts? I have. So let's start with Alphaba. 
I think I think she has to be Grizabella. You know, she's sort of the outcast, and okay, yeah, it has to. I be. thought McCavity. No, no, because Elphaba is still like because what because the magic and all that. Yeah, just I the guess. antagonist. I think is probably the main reason. Yeah, uh, but 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 Elphaba is also the protagonist. Too. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, no, okay. it has to be Grizabella. It has to be the diva. It has what about to be. Galinda? Um, probably um. Um, uh, Jenny. Jenny. Okay, I thought it was Jenny or Jelly, one of the two. Yeah, but I think it's Jenny because the the tap number and the cutesiness. I think mm-hmm. I find that very Glinda. You know, the, except for the cockroaches and like that whole piece of this. That's not very it's so, Glinda. It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But Jelly's an elder cat, and I don't. I don't necessarily see Glinda as like an elder. You know. That's true. I guess the there are very clear lines in cats of like. Adult, yeah, some type in the middle, and very, very young. Kittens. Yeah, like Bomb is in the middle somewhere, and then yeah. the kitten. Yeah, yeah. Okay, la- last one is what about the Wizard of Oz? I guess that's old dude, right? It's gonna be old dude, pulling right? the strings. Yeah, yeah, but you're missing like Bach would definitely be like um, uh, Mungo Jerry, like that little, you know. Oh, it's Mungo Jerry, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jelly could be Nessa because, like, she's so uptight. I don't know. Jelly's so mean to Grizabella. I see everything through the eyes of Grizz. I, so. Can I tell you why I think she's mean to Grizabella? Well, I've, I told you I've, why I've, I thought. I have a yes. theory. My uh-huh. theory is the love triangle with Jelly and Buster for Jones. Yeah, but the Jelly that I worked with told me that she thinks it's because I abandoned my kittens. And Jelly's so maternal, she can't that. imagine. Because Jelly, yeah. How could you that's, abandon your kittens? That's probably way more logical. <laughs> I, I wrote and I thought, and I definitely know I'm the only one that's made up this theory or I've not heard anybody else. Come sure, this, sure. I think Jelly and Grizz were like best friends growing up. Uh-huh. I think Jelly and Bustifer were together. And I think Grizz, Grizz like, with you know what? I kind of like your theory better. And that's because- why. They come yeah. back. And that also is why she's Joey does so much with Gus because those two are actually the same person, but they're tied together a little bit in some way that I can't figure out. But I think that that's, that is the, it's a love triangle and she still is resentful that, that basically she cheated on her best friend cheated with her boyfriend. You know what? I like it. And I'm taking that. I'm t- I think that's the better choice. My goal is whenever cats comes back is to have influenced the plot line just with all these things I made up. <laughs> Groundhog's day. Yeah, for, yeah, for that's fun Chris. too. See, you have some really. I think. It, I think. I think you have some very exciting theories. I like them. This is I what happens the, when you know nothing about dancing or singing, and all you do is think about the plot, and you record or the, lack thereof, and you have to right. about the plot. You right. start to pick up these really random connections, um, oh, and then yeah. I've had a lot of you know cast members fill in some other things I never would have picked up. Like, sure, I don't think I would have known anything about the twins in my oh, two twins. viewings of the show. But now the I twins like, are like freaky. Grizabella is afraid of those twins. Let me tell you something. Twins are. There's a lot you can do with that plot. I feel like there's more that I could have, that like we could have written with the plot with the twins. Oh my gosh, the twins! You ever there was this movie Minority Report, and it yeah. was about like that's what they remind me of. They even have like those. Anyway, what do you think um, Cassandra's doing there? Like, why is she in a junkyard? She is like an expensive, like you know. Egyptian kind of cat. Like what the heck is she doing there? So I have two theories on it. Yeah. And again, I, th- I did spend most of my time on the, the main cats, like the, uh, the singing, the ones like the, the main songs are about. So all the other secondary ones and they're not secondary. They're just by any means, they're just the ones that don't have as much given sure, to me sure. to like anchor off of. But then she has, she goes out there and gets lit up like Mistopheles. Is she like their fabulous friend? Cause she's so gorgeous. Like that's what I, I think, think. I think the the easy answer is I need another dancer. Well, and of so course, but we're not playing that there. game. I think the, the my kind of belief is that to your point, it is a cult, and there are a couple of the cult members that have um, that have collars, so they're clearly from some family. There's a couple right, that are very right. much strays. In the beginning of the the more recent movie, it's like Victoria gets thrown from a, like a bag of humans, like in into the junkyard. Right. So I think she could just be one that like maybe leaves her really high end home to come and hang out yeah. and is addicted yeah, to like the a drugs lady in the tramp thing. And, yeah. I think you're right. 
She so she ran away. She ran away. She and wanted, she's she, she's joined. She didn't want to be kept. But if Mistopheles and your the fan fiction theory, if if Mistopheles and Tugger are a couple, and then and and yeah, you're right. Everything's lighting up, and it's like it's like fabulous. Yeah. Um, Cassandra, you know, is like their beautiful friend that they hang with because you know. So I think I think that kind of works. I okay. think I, I really think that they might be. I mean. There's so many dotted lines if you try to figure out the cat's family tree that I think they might just all be together. Like I think it's a very open cult. Well, just go to the Jellicle Ball and you'll see. You you literally <laughs> see it. They, you roll on top of each other. It's insane. During the ball. Yes. That's why I don't think kids should be there. It's very clearly an orgy. It's extremely sexual. In the Victoria, when she's like shaking and she's like losing her cat virginity. <laughs> yes. It's the like, uh, coming of age. Yeah. It's extremely sexual that scene. So, yep. yeah. I mean, it's there's and Grizz a lot. is just watching. Grizz was She's- a sex worker who comes back to be murdered. <laughs> like if you break it down in certain ways, it's a very dark story. <laughs> yes, but the ultimate gift that that's that's why he's such a cult leader. Old dude is such a cult leader because the ultimate gift is like if oh gosh if he gets to kill me, like. You know what the heavy side layer is? It's there's a fence and it's a big of bones. It's a boneyard back there. He just tossing them over. Just toss you into that. I don't think there's. That's it. There's a, a rumor that in the Winter Garden, it's actually just the attic, and that's like sure. where Grizabelle goes up, and that's actually the yeah. heavy side layer, yeah. and it's not being reborn. So you just get stuck in eternity. You get there. stuck in the Winter Garden Theater. Yeah. Sure. Up in the attic. Yeah. And you get to like haunt whatever show comes there next. Ooh. Well, anything is possible. There's basically 10 different ways to write Cats 2. Oh, and Cats 2. I've yeah. thought a little bit about a couple of them, but I'm not, again, not qualified to, to write this because I couldn't couldn't write a dance number or a song or anything related Old to Old Dude needs to sacrifice a cat every year, otherwise he doesn't keep living. Like, I think that he, like, it's what's keeping him alive. Yeah. When's his turn? I don't. That's why he keeps sacrificing them. I don't. I think know. Monk wants to to take kill him off. So Monk wants him start. out. Monk wants him gone. Yeah, Monk never tries to like go to the heavy side layer. Monk's trying to like. Oh, he wants old dude's role. He wants he wants to be able to control the X. Yeah, but he always wants Grizz out. He keeps her out until Dude's like, "Come on, let her let her speak slash sing." Come on. It's true. It's always Monk. No, it's always Monk. I mean, I was taught that. Like, it's Monk who's literally blocking you from getting to do he's always literally he does this and remark the why do you think that is if he's his there's doesn't seem like there's a rationale for that he really hates me but monk thinks that like i was with him i'm like absolutely not i wouldn't touch that like that's what i was telling you okay so monk thinks that you had a past relationship and you don't well i don't know the guy playing monk told me that he's like i think grizz and monk were i'm like no she hasn't been with everyone like she does have standards <laughs> that's that's the problem is that everyone just assumes grizz has been with everybody that's i know it's terrible and maybe she has but i think she actually rejected monk and he can't stand it he's like you'll be with uh, anything you'll be with anything and you wouldn't be with me so it's important that you are chosen because if he takes over from old deuteronomy you're never getting picked ever like I, he's got it. It's like now or never. Because old dude might he might die, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Let's do a couple quick rapid fires about the show, and I um, think you kind of okay. answered some of them. But I, I want to know if you and I love saying suspend reality. So no male, female. Mm-hmm. You can forget a vocal range, dance numbers. If you could play any cat, which one would you want to play? And I'll say non Grizabella. Oh, it'd be fun to play Victoria. Victoria. Mm-hmm. I would love to be able to dance that and know what that feels like. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's why I always love asking this question because I can't do any of it. So I'm always like, right. I would love to right. be able to belt one day yeah. in my life. But right. I can't. So I'm, I would love to know <laughs> sure. what that feels like. Yeah. Um, what about favorite and least favorite cat? My least favorite cat is Monk. You know that. Yeah. I just think he's such a jerk. Um, and my favorite, you know, it would kind of change. But like when I was – when I first saw the show, I loved like that only like a year ago. It's not crazy, but when I first saw the show, I loved Demeter, and I still think she might be my favorite cat. She's nuts. She is so cracked out. She's the cat that's hair is always standing up. She's mm-hmm. freaking crazy. She she's, is literally suffering from PTSD, OCD, 
all of it. She needs like some Zoloft stat. I like which, the meter. She's my favorite which is, cat. Which is what makes it wild when you think about that number. Like that number is very sexually aggressive. It is all about cavity. Oh my God. And it's God. like, you've got the two cats that one is clearly still trying to go through things and the other one has processed it and they're both still going to sing it the same way. I know. And, but then McCavity, well, Demeter, you know, saves old dude by realizing that McCavity is pretending to be old dude. It was, it's Demeter yeah. that does it. And she jumps on, yeah, she does it. So, so her, her anxiety is great, but she's like, McCavity, McCavity, yeah. McCavity. <laughs> It is, but, it's become my favorite part of the show because it's a, it's just like, as you watch it, it's just kind of really funny to me to watch that scene oh, yeah. and it also be like, I'm always, I would always be watching from the wings on the monitor. Cause I was going to come on fairly soon after that. And I would be like, get him. I, what would I say? If I get him, get him monk. Like I was yeah. just like <laughs> knowing how it's going to end. I feel like they could have dragged out the fight even longer. I wanted a longer cat fight. I wanted more. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, I don't know. I love, I like that scene too. It's cool. McCavity's scary. Yeah. Well, he's not yeah. there. McCavity's not there. <laughs> what is your favorite song outside of memory? Oh, um, I think it might be McCavity. I think it's McCavity. I know we were just talking about it, but it just is. It's a cool song. Yeah. It's a really cool song. If you got stuck quarantined with one of the cats, who are you going to be? Who who are you going to be stuck with? Who would you want to be stuck with? Okay, as me, Donna, or if I was Grizabella stuck with the cat? Oh, I would love to hear both. I've been asking more as you, Donna, but I would love to hear oh, Grizabella's answer. I think answer. I think it would be. I think. I think. Um, let's see. Well, if I want to party, Tugger might be fun. But if but if 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 I wanted to just like hang out and chill, it would be Jelly for sure. Jelly. She seems really ch nice and sweet. Um, but Grizz couldn't have that, you know. I, I no, don't because there's no. still the tension between your love triangle. I know. I feel like Grizz could hang out with Demeter because I feel like they'd be like, "Honey, me too." Yeah. Me hashtag there's me a too. Lot of, a lot of wine. A lot of a wine. Lot of, a lot of a lot of wine and a hashtag me too about and just going on about McCavity. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I've answered this differently every time depending on like what I feel like I, I'm looking for in the quarantine. Like if I want to just have someone hang, take care of everything, it's like, oh, Joey will just like cook all the meals and we'll take, Absolutely. keep the house clean. I've leaned towards Bustifer because I think he's going to have a mansion and he's not going to be there and the fridge is going to be stocked at all times. You love, but you, yeah. Yeah. You like Bustifer and Gus. Gus is actually, uh, Gus, Gus and Jelly. Like I'd love to like go over to their house. Like, like Gus and Jelly be fun to hang out with, I think. Yeah. You know, go over to As their house. She'll make a meal. He'll tell stories, you know. <laughs> As an audience member, it was Mungo Jerry Rumpel Teaser and Tugger Mistopheles were the ones I was just like, and I think mostly because it was just the the it was they were super fun and the dancing is just things that oh like, it's amazing blew my mind. it's amazing yeah. As a me personality wise, I'm like yeah you know I'm a little bit more reserved. Let me have the exactly. guys who are just gonna hang out and eat exactly in, in the in the suburbs. If we weren't in quarantine, I'd go out for a night in the town with Tugger because you know he'd like know all the great spots to go and it'd be yes. fun. And he won all the attention anyway, so I wouldn't have to worry about being yeah. too social. He'll just take care of it. That's true. But quarantine, maybe, you know, hanging out with Jelly, I feel like she'd have great like tea and scones and we could just hang out and talk. Yeah. I feel like she she's one that's probably underrepresented in this. I feel like you the yeah. the question ones that are the now I kinda want to hang out with the twins. I feel like I would learn some like they would teach me some things. Like some, I, I like I feel like I need the twins in a Ouija board or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like the the ring twins or whatever, the girl like the what's that horror movie? Like that's what's gonna happen is they're yeah. just, you're gonna be walking in the hallway and they're gonna just like lights flicker and they're gonna be in front of you. They're 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 really creepy, but kind of fast you can't stop looking at them. I, I love the twins. I used to watch them a lot when I was like skulking around the junkyard. You kind of have to because they're watching you, it seems like. Well, exactly. I would always make sure. Do I know I'm here? Do I know I'm here? Do I know I'm here? Yeah. All right. Million dollar question. I've yes. argued that I don't think Grizabella is the right choice. Yes. Do you agree or disagree? Um, if you disagree, who would you choose? I, I, I think she's the right choice because I think that old Deuteronomy is trying to teach them all that you have to forgive and you have to like – you know, um, 
that you have to forgive. So I think that like he's he he's teaching them all a lesson. Now, with that said, um, if I couldn't pick Grisbella, I I suppose it it should be Gus. I mean, I just don't understand why the little ones want to go. Like, why are the twins trying to? Not the twins. The um. Rump, like like Mungo Jerry and Rumble Teaser, why do they want to go? They shouldn't want to go. I think um, some of it is if it, the argument that I've heard that makes the most sense is that they actually don't want to go, oh. but it's almost like a little bit of a practice round before when they do want to go, they get a little bit of like, a, hey, here's my time to shine and tell my story, and also the attention of like it's fun to still go. On. I I almost relate it. This is probably a really bad analogy, but it's a little yeah. bit of like the. The people on The Bachelor who probably don't really want to actually get married, but they want the influencers. Like they want to become an yeah. influencer. They need the numbers. They need those right. the, those Instagram followers. And yeah. so they're going on the show with no right. intention of winning. Right. That's I think the Mungo Jerry okay. Rumble teaser. Yeah. I say same with Tugger. I don't think he really wants to go. No, same thing. No. Well, I mean, Tugger's the one that they in The Bachelor has like an entire story arc of some craziness just yeah. to get screen time. Um, I guess. I guess, I guess I, I'm going to say um, Buster for Jones needs to go. Really? I don't think yeah. anyone's made an argument for him. Yeah. He's taken up too many of the resources in the junkyard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that's the best argument I've heard. He's eating all the food. He's taking up he's, too many resources. He's, he's, yeah. It's a pain it's not, to take care really of. He's really bad for the environment. Yeah. It's time to let him go. I mean, if, you know, the, the health his carbon, system is- His carbon paw print yeah. is huge. Yes, that is. I, I think that's that's a strong argument. I think so too. I mean, it's not right, you know. It's very utilitarianism. I'm like, what's this is the greatest good for the rest of the tribe. That's right. To get rid I of think him. it's the utilitarian answer. You're right. Oops, <laughs> that's. Me. I like it. I, I I like anything. Well, first of all, I like anything that's not Grisabella. Any argument that's made that's not Grisabella, I, I love. Yeah, I mean, I have to argue for her because I played her. I, but wouldn't it be great if he's like busted for you? Got to go, because yeah, you know it's, it's 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 just enough. He really is. He's he's greedy. He's a that glutton. Is, so I I um that might be my new answer. He might have convinced <laughs> me. But Bustifer is the one to go because he's just he's just a strain on the economy of the he junk is. economy. <laughs> In the junkyard, he's just yeah. <laughs> that is um, amazing. Um, how can we find you on social media and see oh. all these amazing things you're doing? Um, you can find me at Donna Vivino on Instagram or TikTok. I've recently joined. I've been throwing up uh, <laughs> that sounds weird, but I've been putting up some of my. Um, some parody videos. I do them all the time on my own, but I rarely will post them. And I've started posting them and I like to be kind of silly and ridiculous. So um, find me on there. Or, um, maybe I'll parody memory at some point. We'll see. I would love a cat's parody. Oh yeah. I'm giving you, know, you, some, you, know, I'm giving you some ideas here. Yes. 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 So that would be really fun. But um, yeah, even I even make a reference to memory. I did a parody recently. I put it up on Monday of uh, she used to be mine from Waitress, and it's called She Used to Be Blonde. And there's a section of it where I say I'd give anything to belt out a memory or two. And I just got a text from someone today saying, "Wait a minute, I just figured out that that line was a was a was a." I said it was a little gentle nod to my time at Cats, but I didn't want to say. I was like, "Should I say belt out a memory or two? Because I was in Cats, and I was like, "Nope, you know what? I'm not going to spell it out for everyone. Yeah. Cats fans will get it. Cats fans it. are smart." So, yeah, you've got yeah. to, you know, some the best jokes are the ones where it doesn't have to be so obvious. And it's like the, I yes. bet you the that text and that friend, when they hit it, they're like, oh, that was good. And then you were super proud when you got that text because it's like someone recognized that, that effort. Yeah, yeah. He was like, it was like my second listen. And I was like, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Well, thank you so much for, thank you. for being on here. This was super fun. I love that there's now a buster for argument that lives in the, the podcasting ether of cats. Yes. Yes. And so I hope I have some people needed. that will agree with me because I would have voted him off the island. And that's, and you know. Because it is very survivor, isn't it? <laughs> it is survivor. It's every, it's every reality TV show I've ever seen combined into one. Cats is a reality TV show. You're right. Mm -hmm. It is. In it's the ways. X Factor with a little Bachelor now, a little Survivor. We're, we're again, Cats 2 has a lot of options. It would be really great if the audiences could vote who's going to the heavy side layer. That would be a whole new twist. I, I would love you know? that. That's interactive theater. Interactive theater. You go. We're, we're ready for it. <laughs> when, when, we're, when we come back, that's my only request is I would like to be able to vote 
on how shows end from here on. Well, out. Edwin, and there's a show called Edwin Drood that would do that, and there was a song for each whichever character you decided like how the show was going to end. Whichever character that centered around, they'd get to sing their song. So Andrew Lloyd Webber should write every character a new song, and it would revive Cats in a very different way. That you know, you yeah. still hear memory, and then it's like, all right, now old dude's going to choose. Help him choose, everyone. You know that would be Tugger, and then, and then yeah. everybody votes. And if it's Victoria, like. Maybe she's going to dance something. You know, people will just keep buying tickets and yeah, try to vote different, for different things. get a different thing every night. I know. I love it. I'm yeah. in. I'm in. I'm in I would, too. I, I'm happy to participate. I probably yeah. bring zero value to participation besides here's some ideas. But right. I want to see it. I'm, I'm, uh, I want to see Bustifer go up there. I have asked um, – I've, I've sent many messages to Andrew Lloyd Webber that go unanswered. So I'm sure. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think he's going to listen to me, but if anybody does have a way to get in touch with him and can get his attention, uh, let's, let's do it. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a, it's a gold mine. It's not like cats hasn't made enough money already, but this is like, yeah, this is I'm going to, I'm going to work on it. Okay. I'm gonna work I love on it. it. Let right. me know. Keep Thank me posted. You, I, will. I sure will. Well, thank you for being here, and thanks everyone else for listening to this episode with Donna Bobino on the Raw Cat Die, the podcast breakdown of the Cat Stash feed. To follow along, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Raw Cat Die, and check out our website, theraucatdie.com.